I, all my friends are like, so what What are they do and why are they here? Oh, shoot. The If you would start, just kind of uh, introduction of you know who you are. And Hi, my name is Kenji Sumino, Gretty Performance Product. I'm president here at Gretty. I was born in LA, actually. Yeah. Yes. So I'm Japanese, but I was born here when my father was sent here for for his company, and I was born here. And when I was two, I went to Japan and came back when I was nine. So I lived in Japan for seven years and rest is all here. Nice. So I grew up in Torrance, South Bay, SoCal, California. And so when did you, when was your first experience with cars then? Was it, was it in Japan or was it back when you were in LA? Well, experience with cars, you know, I've always been into cars. I think growing up in the 80s, it was pretty special time for a lot of unique cars and the supercars like the the Lamborghini Countach and you know the the all those you know exotics were really popular in the Porsches I got into cars like fairly early you know in the childhood like I think a lot of us that's in the car scene I think you know have experience playing with cars like you know Hot Wheels Mattel's new Hot Wheels Collect them Growing up in the you know late 70s to early 80s, you know, just all the racing um, from back then was so popular. Um, you know, whether to F1 or like Le Mans or like the European races to Japan races, and you know, there's if you look back, there's such a great history of that, right? Just growing up with all these comic books that captures like the racing scene whether it's street or on the track in you know Japan manga is like big so um, with that and just playing with the Hot Wheels and Tomika cars and learning about the cars so that's like the first exposure to you know automobiles my grandfather made me this display case of all the car collection that I had so you know me and my brother we had we would you know organize them and bring them out and play with it and you know with Legos we'll put you know build garages and stuff and then you know play so you know that's always been you know part of my you know life and even today I play with my Hot Wheels with my kids and collect and you know I've you know, if you go into my office you just die cast ev everywhere so. um, but the true passion really started um, when I got my license until then, I was more of a skater, skateboarding everywhere. You know, growing up, I was more, you know, hands-on, like, like to work with my hands and put things together, modify things. I would always get into trouble with my dad. Like, I would take apart stuff, um, even if it wasn't broken, like a VCR or radio, and so interested in how things work, you know. Screwdriver in my hand, like trying to figure out like how things work, I would take it apart. Sometime I'll be able to put it back together and sometime it won't and it's like broken. But then, you know, I'll get yelled at and like, okay, I'm gonna figure out how to fix this, you know? So the, my interest in like how things work was, I think back then we didn't have internet either, right? So you don't have access to that kind of knowledge. Like you get like kids today, you know, look it up, like how things work, you know, how you know, this work or that work. You just Google it and you can find out. But I think that's how, my my interest yeah, yeah with like how things work and even if something broke like i could fix a lot of things now yeah when i got my license um that's when it really took off so you got your license what was your first car my first car actually my very first car was my dad's own oldsmobile i forgot what it was called um but it was a big boat you know the, the 80s you know oldsmobile but i drove that around for maybe less than six months. Then uh, graduated high school and needed a commuter. Got a 1990 Honda Civic DX, automatic. The gray with the black bumper, uh -huh. you know, but uh, automatic. Got into more audio first and learning how to install audio and installing speakers and learning about the amps and making subwoofer boxes. And you know, so you know, I used to hang out at this one place uh, in Torrance um, audio shop. 
it's kind of, you know, I went in as a customer, but we went back there so often that I got to know everybody there. And like, hey, why don't you come out in the garage and check this out? And I was, what, 19, maybe? And they started showing me, like, what's what. And so that kind of started me getting into, like, ripping apart interiors and things like that. From there, started noticing more, you know, different cars out there. And growing up in Torrance, it was the Hondas were always the hot thing. Um, and we see a lot of fixed up, lowered Hondas with nice wheels and um, started getting into that kind of thing. So learning how to lower the car, cutting springs and making intake pipes uh, at Home Depot. PVC piping kind of stuff, you know, and putting motorcycle, dirt bike, uh, uni filter, um, and just kind of see if that would even help the performance. But, you know, I still had automatic. I used to pop it in the neutral and then rev it up and pop it back into gear just to, you know, <laughs> get that chirp, you yeah. know. But I had a neighbor that had a Civic Si, a black one, and you know, we always, and his brother had a CRX SI, and I had the DX automatic, and he had the, you know, we would just go cruising, you know, and just can't keep up. You know, my car was so slow compared to the SI, mm -hmm. and like, I, I need to figure out somehow, ditch this automatic and maybe do something, and went to this local shop in Gardena. So now I got to, you know, know these guys, like how I got to know the audio guys, and they'll invite me into the garage and show me what they do. And like, oh, Kenji, I have this JDM engine that belongs in this EF in Japan, it's a ZC motor, and already has this HKS turbo manifold on there. So if you want, we could convert this whole car, do a motor swap and do a turbo setup. And that's when it really took off and started learning about like the whole performance side of things. And, like you could turbocharge a Honda like that, you know? So we were like the one of the first ones to, to really turbocharge Hondas. There are a few others. That's when I felt, you know, met my good friend now today, uh, Miles Batista, and got into like, kind of like the street racing scene, you know, in the early 90s. And he helped me tune the car. Then started hanging out at his shop in North Hollywood, um, his dad's shop actually. So that's pretty much how got into the car scene and how I am here today, you know, 20, almost 30 years later. I think just the passion of wanting to learn how everything works and just kind of making things better or customizing it, you know, just kind of just helped fuel my, my passion in these, uh, you know, performance industry. And it's, I think we paved the road to a lot of the import, you know, market where, you know, we, like us, and you know, I mean, there's a, a lot of guys that was into that. It was really popular where the import drag racing scene was getting really big and bigger companies are starting to invest more into like development. And I think because of that need for certain equipment, certain tools, certain, you know, parts, you know, that that's how it all, you know, took off. I think that's, same with any industry, right? When everything's a new concept and then takes off from there. I started working here at Gretty 95. And I was, uh, they were just starting R&D team here, department. Okay. And they came here in the States 94 from Trust, Japan, and kind of testing the market. They realized what's popular here is completely different from Japan. Um, some crossover like the Supras and the 300ZX, um, the 3000GT, um, but what was popular here at the time was Hondas. Anything Hondas and Trust didn't really make any parts for Hondas as much as like their Skylines and Sylvias and so they realized that they need to come in and really develop products for US market. And at the time I was at McDonnell Douglas, I got sick of the spending all the money on Hondas. So I got rid of that car and jumped in a S14 240SX. And I already knew the difference with the Japanese version and the US version. Japanese version had the SR20 turbocharged, US is KA20 2.4 liter, you know, NA. 
and they didn't have the turbo. So I knew it was already different. So I was like, okay, well, it's different and I can't put the Sylvia stuff in there. So maybe I won't spend too much money, but I could have a nice car that make it look like a Sylvia, right? But, you know, it'll be a, a nice cruiser, but at least I want to get exhaust. And then started looking into the exhaust and I wanted a trust grady exhaust. At that time, I already, my parents moved to Tustin, which is a city over from Irvine. And I heard that Grady is here in Irvine. So I'm like, go, oh, I'm gonna go, go visit them. And I wanna order the exhaust from, from Grady. So that's when, again, you know, me with the curiosity and learn, you know, asking questions, I got to know a few, few of the guys here at Grady. Okay. And the guy that was in charge of putting the R&D team together, you know, this Japanese guy, P. Dale, um, was just asking me what I do. And like, oh, I'm, I work at Douglas as an engineer, but, you know, I, I have these cars, I've been building cars. Like, would you be interested in working here? You know, like, oh yeah, really? You know, if you like, I mean, we'll send you to Japan for training. And right there, I, I, you know, I just realized that, you know, I need to take advantage of that, of that opportunity. You know, they're like, when can you start? I'm like, well, give me two weeks. You know, let me just make sure that I give proper, you know, notice. But as soon as I started, you know, they, they already had plans to make Honda turbo kits for Civic. Like, oh, I've done that. You know, I know, you know, a cool, little bit about that, you know, but, you know, to make it into like a, a production, you know, kind of thing, I, I needed to learn more. So they gave me an opportunity to go to Japan and... Uh, then how long were you there in Japan? In six months total. Okay. So they told me, we're gonna send you to Japan, you're gonna work with all the R&D team at Trust, and these are the guys. So Trust's been around since 1977. And over the years, like especially in the early, late 80s to early 90s, you know, they were even going to the 24 hours of Le Mans with Porsche 962s to Toyota, you know, Group C cars. And I was working alongside of the, the guys that I used to read, read about in the Option magazine. So it was a great opportunity in the first project. You don't see it here today. It's down at uh, Hive, but um, the R33, GTR S Rock, the metallic flake one. That was the first project that I got to work with alongside of the the rest. Like we, there was about seven R and D guys working on the car to uh, prep for the Auto Salon and the Speed Top Speed Challenge. So they kind of showed me how to properly make a prototype in a cooler, the turbo system the piping to make sure that we could mass produce, you know, different bends and, you know, different lengths and, you know, the, the specs to where their factory is able to duplicate. You know, so kind of started learning about all that while, while I was there, making exhaust systems, um, learning about different components, like the different sizes of the turbos. And then before coming back, they took me out to all of Japan's, they had seven satellite sales office and I was able to visit all the dealers, the shop, tuner shops along, you know, throughout the country in Japan to meet them and also see their market and see what these tuner shops do to kind of bring that back to kind of implement to our, you know, product here. Summer of 95 brought a R32 Skyline. I think the very, one of the very first Skyline uh, to come to the States to race at the import drag racing event at Battle of the Imports. Um, from there, the whole JDM, well, we didn't even used to call it JDM, just Japanese import um, scene really took off where the drag racing became more legit on the track and people are spending a lot of money to, to compete and, and for that bragging rights, right? They're one of the fastest Hondas. Um, from there, like different cars like the Zs and the Supras and ARC-7 really started to take off in company like us or the HKS or, you know, other Japanese tuner brands started coming in to, to really invest more time and effort into the States because it was growing and everybody wanted to ride that, you know, that wave. 
and big turbo kits from Japan were like selling, the intercooler kits were selling. Um, it really took off where, and then at that same timing, Fast and the Furious, right, came out. People started flipping out like, wow, you could shoot flames out of the exhaust system. You know, we used to get a call from, you know, random people and like, hey, I saw this Fast and the Furious, your exhaust system, you know, how do we make the flames to shoot out, you know? So, you know, we used to get, that definitely really um, took the, the industry to the next level and kind of grew from there. And then the gaming scene had a, a lot of effect, like the, the Gran Turismo, you know, series. And it, that too, we used to get calls to how to set your car up on the game. Like, <laughs> are we supposed to know, like, what's the suspension setup should be like, or the, you know, the tire setting, like, um, that's a game. Like, if you're calling about the real car, you know, we could maybe help you, but because of the, how the car scene's so popular, the movies picked it up, the gaming, you know, industry picked up, and it just really, just really took off. Drag racing is not as popular as, what it was back then and more like the drifting or or the you know the time attack um or like the toge drives and stuff but um yeah i wish uh maybe one day we'll, we'll build a drag car again we'll see from a shop standpoint i mean you have a lot of builds throughout the years like yeah what's kind of been your favorite like, you know i haven't had um my personal builds for a long time, until about four years ago. And yes, uh, you know, out of this garage, we've built a lot of different project cars and I've met a lot of people, you know, like Sung, got opportunity to work with special, you know, collaboration project with different companies or certain individuals like Sung. Um, and I have a great team that could make this happen. And uh, it just, the project is usually based off of like what's hot that day or, or that year, you know, that that's, you know, during that time. And we work with manufacturers like Toyota, Honda, and got into the whole drifting with Ken Gushi. And that really took on and gave us more opportunity to work with Toyota on different, like their new vehicle launches. And then we'll build a SEMA project with that alongside with Ken Gushi's drifting program. And we'll have like a full, you know, season of drifting plus, you know, full season of like project building um, relationship with Cyan. And then when Cyan closed right. its door, but just kind of reabsorbed back to Toyota, mm -hmm. we started working with Toyota Motorsports, the same guys that runs the NASCAR programs and the NHRA program. So it became a bigger scale type of program, but you know, drifting wasn't as big in their focus. So yeah. our program kind of took a hit with the budget cuts, but we were still able to, you know, get the, the new FRS to, you know, the 86 and then the new Supra. We were able to kind of build that relationship and in that pro program, we we're able to develop a, a more relationship with other brands that wanted to become like a technical partners that would, you know, like the KW suspensions and different tire brands that we were sponsored with. And whatever we build, you know, we got these components and we have the, if established that kind of network. And I think that's when I really came out and was able to meet a lot of people and build a relationship and build a network and, you know, just kind of gathering certain people and in individuals in my circle and you know it just bring back brings out so much different opportunities right and you know just kind of being being active and seeing what's going on out in the industry and you know just like how I met Sung you know he posted a, a rocket bunny rendering of the 240z and posted on Instagram Say, if anybody in SoCal could get something like this, let us know. Marketing manager Mike here saw it. Like, what do you think, Kenji? Like, hey, let's head him up. Because we import, you know, distribute Rocket Bunny. So, you know, we reached out to them two weeks later. Sung's walking in the front door. Like, hey, nice to meet you. Like, you know, we want to build this car for our own, you know, project. 
and you know what can we do like can we get this kit from you guys and at the time it was still rendering but from there I contacted Mr. Mira and just became a big SEMA project you know and just rest is history right and then from there some another idea pops up hey why don't we do this why don't we do that so like you know June MI comes along and hey why don't we come up with this die cast and we'll put Song and your name on it and make it into a collab so I think it's needed especially with the performance industry it's passion driven all enthusiast passion driven you know running around in non-stop um, at the same time it's very rewarding and get to meet people like I mean meeting Sung and building that car is how I met you guys yeah. and now you're here working on my car like this and giving us that opportunity so I think that's that's the important part I think um, with anything you know if you love what you do and if you have the passion for it and if you're able to kind of see what goes on out there and you know who you surround yourself with it you know it opens up so many doors and we could have fun at the same time like that's you know I think what keeps me going